Hey, a pleasant good afternoon, everyone. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be a Columbus Blue Jackets season preview. It is a new era in Columbus, as, of course, they move on from their former head coach, John Tortorella, and now have Brad Larson as their head coach, fooled, filled with a bunch of solid young prospect pool as well. But let's see what they have when it comes to the NHL roster, is that's what we'll talk about as well in this preview. But let's first go into, they of course have Kent Johnson, who came out of Michigan. He's a very creative thinking player that will be a very good player once he comes up. Cole Sillinger is another player that just also immediately um, has made the team and is going to be an impact right away. And you think, honestly, he's a player that plays at such a good level an excellent two-way player that has a good shot. I wouldn't be surprised if he makes an impact at 18 right away. We saw Mason McTavish. Obviously, these guys aren't the same type of player, but Mason McTavish looked great in the Ducks' first game of the season yesterday. So I wouldn't be shocked if Cole Sillinger's the same. They, both of those guys just have an instinct and have that very good just stick like intuitiveness, like think-on-the-fly mindset for such a young player that is like huge that some guys don't necessarily get until a couple years in that I think he will be successful at a young age. Of course, they also have Alexander Texier, who's just been getting better and better at center you all have out there. And then you have the biggest wild card in all of hockey, Patrick Line, which is obviously going to show how solid this team can do as you're in your retool, rebuild situation right now, trying to bring in these young guys and letting them play, which I think is a smart move, letting the Bo Chris of the world play, letting the Andrew Peaks of the world play, letting the uh, Cole Cylinders of the world play, the Texiers of the world. I think letting all these guys play is a very smart move, plus... Um, Plus, also having Yegor Chinkachov make the team, too, who was another one of your top prospects, another guy that's a mature two-way player. So with Sillinger and Chinkachov, you're adding good two-way players that just need to add a little bit more strength, but that's expected. One's 20, one's 18. So you have good players. you got two good netminders, both at 27. Elvis Mr. Lincoln's you just extended to a good contract, a good cap hit of $4 million in my eyes, and he's going to be a good goalie for the future. You have Corpy for now, who you can use as trade bait, and you have draft picks, too, that you can use to grab some people in the draft or use to get younger guys in trades as well. Of course, Jake Bean now is in Columbus. That's a very nice pickup, a good offensive potent defenseman that can move the puck a little bit. Having him with Lewinsky, I think, would be good. Having Gavrinkov now in his prime years of getting to 25, maybe he's going to continue to develop and get going. And then Domi is, of course, the other wild card that is not named Patrick Line in Columbus. What is he going to be able to do fully? And how is he going to be able to kind of play in Columbus? Is having Cole Cylinder or maybe Chinkachov if he's on his line, are they going to be able to kind of help him and aid him into having a very good season? That is something we are going to have to see as time goes on. And then, of course, Blue Jackets, um, yeah, uh, Kakalainen is very good at picking up guys from overseas as he picked up another guy in terms of Gregory Hoffman, who played over in Switzerland, played in the Swiss Club, ah, Swiss Cup, excuse me, and played good in the playoffs in, in the NL as well. As he comes back over, having previously been drafted years ago in the 2011 fourth round by the Carolina Hurricanes, so he played good overseas in Switzerland, his home country. You're going to have to see what he's able to do now. Is he able to come back over and have a productive um, showing over here? He's going to get some time. He's going to get the ability to have a chance to show that he can be a late bloomer at the NHL level as well, and we'll see what that's able to do. But this team, of course, they brought in Jake Voracek, too, from the Flyers, bringing back Jake Voracek into the fold. He's a great veteran to have as you're retooling, as you're rebuilding, to hold a bunch of people accountable and in check. So I think you have the good veterans there to hold people accountable and in check in the Nyquist and Voracek's of the world, plus the good young developing players. It's just going to be a tough task for this team to have a successful season this year. I think this is a team that is in a rebuild, retool, whatever you want to call it. You moved on from Tortorella because Tortorella is a guy that always wants to compete, always wants to find a way to win in any way, shape, or form, which right now I think the Blue Jackets with Kakalina, and you're trying to keep building up those great cylinder level, those great Chikachov level prospects, Texier level prospects that are able to just be the next part of the success core going forward. That is really going to help you out going forward and help you to be that very strong team that we saw 
the Blue Jackets be with Bobrovsky and even the last couple of years of Tortorella still continuing to have success and find ways to have success. You're going to be that team that's able to have that for a more longevity period of time because bringing in all these young guys is a good success story written in the future for this Blue Jackets team since you are a middle market team and can't spend as much money as the Torontos of the world and other teams out there. So I think this is a smart strategy by Kakalainen. I think it's going to take a little bit quicker than people anticipate in terms to get back to being successful because you already have Cylinder up. You already have Chinkachov up. Say Hoffman does come over and does well. You have Texier. You do have the guys, like I said, Nyquist and Borchek, veterans that just know what they're doing and know how to help guys and guide guys along. So you have the foundation pieces in place. It's not going to be a winning season this year just like it wasn't last year. But I think that's not what you're expecting coming into this year. You're expecting Merz Lincolns to be a beast. You're expecting these young guys to play well. You're expecting Boquist to show huge improvement. You're expecting Domi to actually show that he is going to really be motivated and really playing well. And the same goes for Line. A. So if all those things happen, you're moving in the right direction, plus your young guys starting to develop, you're moving in the right direction in Columbus to have a successful team again and have these young guys come in, plus with the draft picks you have this year, you have two draft picks, you're able, in the first round, you're able to kind of get guys and continue to add to that core that Kakalainen has been developing to have a pretty damn good farm system down there. So I hope you all enjoyed this Columbus Blue Jacket season preview. Down below, you can subscribe or up above in the nice, easy-to-use widget. Stay safe out there, everybody, and enjoy the season, Blue Jackets fans. Good luck to you all.